Hello everyone. This will hopefully be a very brief video that will end the only testable argument I am yet to hear from the Flat Earth community. Though, I gotta say, I have been thoroughly entertained uh, over the last couple of weeks, and I've watched seven or eight hours of Flat Earth documentaries, and I am Mark Sargent and Matthew Boylan are really, really entertaining guys. I reckon they should wind up writing books, TV shows, and they're going to beat a lot of what we see on TV. But unfortunately, um, I can't see too much sense in the model where the Earth is flat, not a globular shape. Um, for one, the physics of the globe makes perfect sense. Uh, gravity works the way it should on a global structure. You've got winds, air currents, ocean currents, all of which um, function the way they should. But let me get straight into this. Um, Flat Earth Clues Part 7. This is it. This is the one kind of testable claim Mark Sargent makes that you can look at flights and uh, just the pattern of flight paths around the world is going to show you that something is very wrong and flights in the southern hemisphere are going to take much much longer than flights in the northern hemisphere so let's have a look at it from the flat earth model this is this is the flat earth that I talk about and I'm going to pick two distances that are relatively similar one's going to go from Tokyo to New York and the other is going to go from Sydney to Santiago in Chile so there's a little program update screen which will tell us distances so we've got from Tokyo to New York to 242.4 and from Sydney to Santiago 549 so if you take 549 and divide it by 242 you're gonna get 2.2 basically. So the distance between on, on, on any flat Earth, even the shortest theoretical possible distance. Now, what you'd expect in reality would be that they'd fly a roundabout way around America. So this this gap would be even bigger. But you know, we could say with confidence that on a flat Earth model, um, the distance between Sydney and Santiago is more than double the distance between New York and Tokyo. Well, let's have a look at actual flights between these two destinations, shall we? Okay, so first of all, those distances, we've got um, Sydney to Santiago, 11,300, and New York, Tokyo, 10,800. Pretty close, within 5%. Now, some flights. This is Qantas 27. It goes from Sydney to Santiago, covers indirectly 12,200, directly 11,353 kilometers in 11 hours, 51 minutes. Um, first of all, we can check whether these numbers make sense. So one more thing that I'd like to mention is that if you live in the southern hemisphere, you are familiar with these westerly winds, which means when you fly from east to west, you get a bit of help from the wind. Um, so if this flight has flown 12, 12 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 0, that many kilometers in 11 hours, 51 minutes, 11 hours, 51 minutes is like 11.85 hours. It's flown at 1,031 kilometers per hour, and if you take a Boeing 747, its top speed is 988, with the wind in its back, 1031 makes perfect sense. And just to illustrate this, that there's nothing dodgy about it, if we took the flight in the opposite direction, so flight from um, Sydney to Santiago, look at that, they're 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, basically between 11 and a half and 12 and a half hours, in the opposite direction, 13, 13, 13. So the opposite direction, basically, you're going against the wind. So this, this thing makes perfect sense with the specs of the airplane. And conversely, um, Tokyo to New York, you've got 
What do they fly? They fly a blank 777 and they do 13,196 and they do that in how many hours? 11.55. So I mean that's basically 11.9 like nine two hours or something like that. So it's eleven oh seven, and if you look at Boeing seven 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 nine fifty, uh, wind in its back, yeah, makes reasonable sense. And I mean, even if you pick just the next flight, you know, even the briefer one, you'd get eleven two four. Two one four divided by how many hours? Eleven and twenty three. So that'll be divided by eleven. So twenty three minutes is about just over a third of an hour. So we should say eleven point three nine, something like that. Yeah, nine eight four. And if we went in the opposite direction, I'm sure that would be confirmed. So as you can see, um, the flights from Santiago to Sydney, Sydney, Santiago, New York, Tokyo um, are approximately the same length for approximately the same distance. You're looking at, you know, 11 hours, 51, 12 hours, something like that, 11 to 13 hours, which again makes perfect sense when the earth is round and you'd need to come up with some really convoluted conspiracy um, if the earth was flat, you know. Is there something secret in the engines making one plane go two and a half times slower than the other one? I don't know. That would be... That makes no sense. Um, a bit of a postscript here. Uh, I have probably gotten some value from watching all those videos. I'm now skeptical of many things about NASA. You're right. There's many composite images and... There could be something interesting about the Earth we live in because we're definitely not given enough photo and video evidence um, to show it. But, you know, the round globe makes sense. And perhaps, finally, I am not some kind of a shill for NASA or government. And in fact, you know, I'm a fairly skeptical guy. I do a podcast called TMR Podcast, which is on this channel, which is quite skeptical of everything about, you know, government's authorities and world economy and I also um, professionally I'm a robotics engineer and I teach programming and robotics to gifted kids here in Melbourne and I have a channel that has robotics and programming tutorials have a look at that so uh, please just no personal attacks yeah that's it I'm looking forward to see if people can you know make some other testable claims that we can put to the test but I think you know this one is busted pretty badly. Thank you.